Uh, good evening, friends. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. Iran says key Nance nuclear facility hit by a sabotage. Uh, and of course, Iran is vowing to enrich uranium up to 60%. 90% is all you need for making a nuclear weapon. But Iran doesn't really have to enrich uranium that high because they already have nuclear weapons. Well, it just so happens that we find out exactly what happens, not because of this article that cites Israeli public media, however, cited intelligence sources who said it was the result of an Israeli cyber attack that caused uh, this uh whatever there was going on with the facility. But I found out today from Israeli journalists there that I know over in Israel that said that there was a table, a very unique table that was delivered to the facility. And the Iranians never really bothered to inspect the table closely. The table actually had some very interesting cavities that had been built into it. And of course, it was loaded with explosives in this table, so well hidden and so well sealed that the Iranian uh, people there at the nuclear facility didn't take the time to inspect it, never realized that this table was a flipping bomb. And of course, what happens is once they get it in there, of course, months go by and then Israel is able to detonate this table remotely. So yeah, it was a sort of Israeli cyber attack, but as a result, ended up blowing up inside the facility. So a uh, very big embarrassment for Iran. Iran's not really saying exactly what happens there, but says it's, uh, it is going, as they said here in the article on Yahoo News, they're going to enrich uh, uranium at its highest level ever uh, after this was happening there and uh, up to 60%, as I was telling you already there. So interesting to see, and also interesting to find out what really did happen there. Also, I'm finding out too that another Israeli-owned vessel uh, has been hit by Iran over in the Persian Gulf after about a 48-hour following that ship there. Uh, of course, Israel always wanting to retaliate on any of these things that are happening like this, but the, the vessel is not carrying an Iran flag. So it's kind of awkward to say that Iran is a uh, targeting Israeli interests if Iran doesn't really know who owns the ship, which I kind of find interesting in the first place. Uh, also, Biden is also uh, going ahead to, to deal with the United Arab Emirates, the deal of the F-35s. He is allowing them to purchase these planes. Uh, very, very uh, lucrative deal for the uh, arms, American arms industry. $23.37 million in acquisition package, packages included uh, from uh, this deal there. Uh, this was something that Trump had actually had, had brought in, but the Biden administration had put a halt to it until they reviewed the plan. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting to note that. And, uh, and then it comes another issue that I wanted to share with you. Uh, you remember just the other day we were talking about how that the uh, Chinese and Iranians are planning a cyber type of attack uh, in the very near future on the U.S. banking system. Now, I was in a very interesting meeting a little while back, uh, a man that had met me that was talking about global economic collapse. And he said that Egypt would be the precursor to this global economic collapse. You'll see Egypt collapse first. And oddly enough, uh, I get a message from a friend of mine uh, uh, up in D.C., and he says to me that uh, you're not going to believe this, Steve, but there is already an initiative underway to collapse Egypt economically. And, of course, he was saying to me that we may very well see the Iranian uh, Chinese attack on uh, a cyber attack on U.S. banking uh, institutions that has been planned for some 10 years by China. Iran joined that that uh, that uh, uh, battle to attack the U.S. banking system about two years ago. And uh, but of course, my big question, though, was is what you know, what then is causing the collapse of Egypt economically? So I reached out to the friend of mine about that to see if I could find out, different friend altogether, uh, about this economic collapse. And he sent this to me. So I figured I'd share this with you guys as well. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, he gave a speculation on what he thinks is a plausible cause for the potential developing catalyst of variables surrounding Egypt's impending collapse. 
And it does seem very viable what he says. He says it is possible that Russia may have been involved uh, a party leading up to the Suez Canal incident that developed on March 23rd of 2021, given the presence of at least two Russian warships within proximity of, of the Evergreen prior to its collision with the sidewall of the canal. It's probable that Russian naval forces may have conducted maritime operations to sabotage the rudder of the ship's vessel, which was later found to be the primary factor of the ship's uh, inoperability. The primary motives behind the impending collapse of Egypt's economy and possible political regime transitions are driven by China's incentive to acquire control of the Suez Canal, which would ultimately give them the ability to regulate traffic flow of vessels and frequently utilize the canal for global trade, thus positioning themselves to hold political leverage over the competing Western economies. Now, he points out Suez Canal, China is incentive is to indirectly push Egypt into default on the development of loans issued to them in attempt to acquire the Suez Canal to further their political and economic interest. It is, represent, it's rep, it is representative of similar financing deals seen in numerous other countries across Africa, South Africa, America, etc. China, China is currently Egypt's largest trade partner. And the largest inventor of the Suez Canal Industrial Zone is China, which allocates capital via their state-owned conglomerate uh, Tinian Economic Technological Development Area, TEDA, agreements which have been signed to begin construction on a new container handling terminal. Also, he pointed out China has displayed a predominant preference to infrastructure investment over manufacturing business, and Egypt being one of China's first major Middle East projects may, uh, excuse me, may be used as a testing grounds to utilize the nations as a proxy state similar to the U.S. and various other Middle Eastern countries, may implement a coup to position seamless transfers of the Suez Canal and control. Well, that may also explain, though, why Russia themselves uh, is looking to uh, actually use their shipping routes. If you remember the uh, the Arctic Circle, Russia has been really moving up military hardware and stuff to protect the Arctic Circle. Uh, and, you know, and of course, as I pointed out, uh, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half, two years ago, I was pointing out how that Russia is moving up their military around the North Pole, and they're really claiming this, uh, our, uh, and, oh, excuse me, the, uh, the North Pole region, the Arctic Circle there. And the reason I said was is because they know there's a pole shift coming, or they know that there is a meltdown because of, not because of global warming, but because of all these things that are happening on the Earth. And it's going to melt that ice up there, and it will become a new shipping route that could be utilized as well. Uh, I think that Russia is trying to capitalize on that. But at the same time, as uh, the friend here that pointed out here, uh, Egypt is really in an awkward situation. They're pushing them to the verge of collapse. Uh, we also know that Egypt's uh, partnership with Ethiopia and China is a major lender for both Ethiopia and Egypt. Well, so if China decides, well, we just want to take over the whole thing so we can control the commerce that's going on here, why not just shove them over the edge. And of course, that is all part of the new world order, the, the one world government, one world economy. Uh, Israel will be the central hub where all these are leading to. And we already know that China, through their uh, One Belt, One Road initiative, has built ports in Israel and or built one already in Israel and uh, going to build another larger port in Ashkelon as well. Um, and maybe this has a lot to do with Ukraine things that are going on over there too. So think about it. So much is happening and uh, nobody's paying attention. I think it's worth noting. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benut. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, if you happen to really want to get something that piques your interest, uh, we did a very special broadcast over, uh, not very long, it was a short broadcast, but some interesting inside information that was shared with me about the real reason we went to war with Iraq. And oddly enough, it's over on Patreon, but it had to do with the mummy of Nimrod. So if you catch that broadcast, you'll find out some interesting things and how we ended up with the Hydrant Collider, at least the modern day version of it. And as I said, the real reason why we went to war with Iraq. Some of the most secret information that you could ever imagine 
shared with me and we're sharing it with you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget EMP Shield. A lot of crazy things are going on in the world as it is. EMP Shield is still running their special. Uh, so be sure, jump over there on the site there, empshield.com uh, and use the INL50 code when you're getting your EMP Shield. And I'll try to put a new link. We actually have a new link there. Maybe I can put that in there for you so that you can click on it and it'll automatically have the INL50 code in there for you so you don't lose the discount that you deserve to get on this. Stephen Bennett with Israeli News Live. Thank you.